Horizon Chess, what was his reaction? This is Putin escalates on Ukraine nuclear ultimatum. North Korea sends more troop. This is better enforcer. Yeah, I, I guess Putin escalated again. Yeah, in from Russia, there's been many nuclear threats so far. So what type of threat is this? It's like, you know, there's a theme, right? Like if, if you give a threat, it's a threat. But if you give, give so many threats, it's like people don't take you seriously. But even amongst them, how you give a threat, like you can... Like, okay, this is probably different type of way. So is this just like one of those threats? Or is it like a, you think, oh, this is a proper threat? I don't know. Because so far, like North Korea, South Korea, you know, like issue, probably Taiwan issues rising as well. Uh, tensions are rising Middle East with Iran and Israel. It, it feels like this could be a point where somebody would do something drastic because like things are happening around the globe. So I don't know about this ultimatum, man. Right? Uh, then again, people always think, oh, he's not going to use nuke, right? Nuke is just like Hiroshima, like uh, shit like that, right? No, really, it could be smaller tactical nuke in a smaller tactical place where casualties are not that high, but it's like a message, right? I would say that in the past, like geopolitics is very complex when you really think about it, right? And people always like, oh, Jesus means this. Not really. And I would say this in the past, like if one guy does it, everybody is free to do it afterwards. It's like crossing a line. So... Let's hope this shit doesn't happen, right? Because everybody's fucked. Too many nuclear powers around the world. Any conflict could like turn into nuclear power. And the countries that are not nuclear power are going to be nuclear power from now on because of this. So but there'll be a time where like probably everyone's a nuclear power. It's just like, okay. So it's going to be interesting. Let's watch it. All right, good evening folks, it's Enforcer Matt and welcome back to another Short War video and today we have very big news coming out of both Ukraine and Russia and specifically we're seeing a bit of a diplomatic crisis beginning between Ukraine and Russia because of some comments that Zelensky made the other day about an ultimatum to the West alleging that he needs NATO membership or Ukraine might become a nuclear power. There's been many different interpretations of Zelensky's words and we have the video of his statements today so I'll let y'all decide what y'all think about it but none... Wait, um, what? I read that wrong, apparently. I thought Putin gave new... No, it's... I don't know why I read that wrong. Putin escalates on Ukraine... Okay, because I thought Putin is the one. Ukraine is saying that if I don't become NATO member, I might have to think about nukes. Interesting. Nonetheless, Putin has started running with that statement and saying it's time to escalate the war with Ukraine to the highest level based on the fact that Ukraine could become a nuclear power. So that's quite a situation. And also, we are getting video evidence allegedly showing North Korean soldiers training inside of Russia right now to enter the war in the Ukraine front line. And also, we are hearing that a collaborator was allegedly taken out in Luhansk in a very large car bombing. But with that, we're jumping into our first article of the day, which goes to the Kyiv Post. And jumping into our first article of the day, it says that right here in pointing out that Ukraine gave up its nuclear arsenal in exchange for paper that no one honored, meaning the Budapest Memorandum, Zelensky tells NATO members that Ukraine must either return to being a nuclear country or become a full member of NATO. Come on, man. I mean, I get it, right? I get what he's saying. But ah, you've been getting a lot of aid from West, America, and everybody. Without that aid, you wouldn't even last a month. Right? And then kind of like pointing like, okay, we give this based on a paper that no one honored. It feels like a jab. Like, I get it, right? But still, again, you were not going to do anything with those nukes. You didn't have a way to sustain those nukes, keep it, maintain it, and actually use it. So giving up, either give up to Russia or throw it in the ocean. That's the option you had. So that's not much of an option, is it? Right? And at the same time, like, you get, you got on a lot of, like, aid from the West, right? Uh, understand that point, but maybe not make that jab. I don't know. It feels weird to me. I get it from where he comes from, right? Or, you know, all all the cities and everything in Ukraine destruction is just ridiculous at a whole other level. But still. And we have the video here of Zelensky's statements, which led to this conclusion. And right now, this has caused some tensions between not only allies, but also some more uh, propaganda statements being made by Putin, basically, that they want to escalate the war even further based on these comments about nuclear weapons. So let's take a look at the video and see exactly what Zelensky said. So Zelensky said, so how can we believe in this document and how can we trust all the partners who guaranteed the protection of our territorial integrity? He said, and sovereignty. And the answer is very simple. He said, does it work? No, the document does not work. And do other major partners' agreements with Russia work? And he goes on to say, no, that is, these were not only agreements between Ukraine and Russia, but also between Ukraine and all of its partners. So in general, 
all these agreements did not work out. And he also says, which of these big countries <laughs> all the nuclear powers were affected, all of them, no, it was only Ukraine. He said, who gave away the nuclear weapons? All of them, no, only one. Who was it? It was Ukraine. He said, who's at war today? It's also Ukraine. And he said, and so it turns out that, and he said something here and looks like Ukrainian or Russian. He said, in a conversation with one of the candidates, he said, what's the solution? Or will Ukraine have nuclear weapons? And then it'll be a defense for us. Or we should have some kind of alliance. NATO, we do not know of any other effective alliances today. He said, the NATO countries are not at war today. He said, NATO members are not at war. In the NATO countries, people are all alive. Thank God, he said. And he said, and th that is why we choose, and that is why we choose NATO, not nuclear weapons. We are choosing NATO. So, very interesting comments being made by Zelensky right there. And the way I interpret it... <laughs> okay. First of all, <laughs> by definition, if you join NATO, then NATO countries will be at war. It's not like as soon as you join NATO, Russia is like, okay, we back off. And deterrence only works if you have those at the time before anything happens. During the war, if you take nuclear weapons or somewhere or make nuclear weapons, that could make other nuclear power that is at war at you response earlier. So I don't know how that become a, de a deterrence, right? If Russia suddenly realized like in 24 hours, somehow Ukraine will obtain nuclear weapons. So right then, Russia will try to nuke Ukraine before they can get it. Deterrence doesn't work like that, right? If somebody is pointing a gun at you, you can suddenly just take out a gun and try to point at them. They will shoot you. That only works if you, both of you have gun at the same time pointing towards you, right? Both, that's why all these movies have like everybody just pulling out at the same time, not afterwards. That's not how it works. I think he knows that he's trying to speed up NATO thing rather than actually get nuclear weapons. And it's not so easy to get nuclear weapons, right? Uh, from where? Like USA, US is not going to give them. That will be escalation in itself. How are they going to get nuclear weapons? They're going to develop it themselves? I mean, that would work, but that would take time. It is the same way that Kiev Post interpreted it, and also pretty, pretty much everybody around the world. Zelensky was essentially giving an ultimatum that they need their nuclear weapons back or they need to be a NATO member. And right now we have heard from the West that Ukraine cannot join NATO for several reasons. Currently they're at war and it's not permitted for a country at war to join NATO. And number two, there are some corruption issues that need to be worked out before they can join the alliance. So and also there will be a bigger issue, like say they join NATO. Would their article, which is already itself is a loose article, would that article work then? Like, okay, art, what is it? Article, whatever, fifth, whatever article, right? Like every NATO country has to answer. Would that apply? Because Ukraine will join the NATO when the war is already happening. So that article would technically means if somebody attacks Ukraine now, then NATO will have to answer, not before. There'll be many loopholes, shit like that. And not to mention that article itself is a loophole. That, that's not a, a forced thing. Like everybody will have to answer. That's not the case. So there are actually things in place preventing Ukraine from joining, but they are demanding to become a NATO member, even though they've been told that's not possible at the moment. So they're sort of left with another option here, which is to potentially return to being a nuclear country by developing their own nuclear weapons. So that is something right there that is being interpreted that way by Russia as well. And even though Russia is in the wrong here, they are going to run with that statement as propaganda and use it to escalate the war even further. And moving on to our next one here, this one goes to War Translated. And we can see Putin's response in text. And we can see here that Vladimir Putin called a statement about Ukraine's potential ability to create nuclear weapons within a few weeks a provocation. And at the same time, he said, creating nuclear weapons in the modern world is not difficult. And I don't know if Ukraine is capable of doing this. It's not that simple. And also Putin added that any step in this direction would be met with an appropriate response and that Russia would not allow it under any circumstances. So, you know, right now we're seeing Zelensky walk back these comments about nuclear weapons. And we'll get to that in just a moment moment but nonetheless Putin look the question of uh, this is the moment right now right would US nuke Russia no Russia knows that unless Russia used nukes or something that's the current situation would Ukraine use a nuke if they got them now 100% I see it right with every destruction Ukraine has faced from Russia 
all the things that are destroyed, all the losses that has happened, right? Uh, all the things that have happened in Ukraine, Ukraine would definitely use nukes, even tactically, whatever, right? Just to, you know, just like how USA used nuke in Japan during World War II, Ukraine would use that in Russia, definitely. So as soon as Ukraine come close to obtaining nuclear weapon, or even like KGB or what is it called, F FSB or whatever that is now, even get a whiff that Ukraine is probably in the way to obtain nuclear weapon, Russia would use them in U Ukraine instantly. I see that. I see that whole picture without a doubt. I don't think Ukraine is trying to get a nuclear weapon. I think they're trying to speed up NATO somehow, right? Because some kind of discussion happened with NATO. NATO just said like, yeah, it's not going to happen now because you're at war. They're trying to make, force NATO. So they do some kind of a, like a loophole, just write, make an exception in Ukraine's case or something like that. I don't see Ukraine trying to obtain nuclear weapon. Being the liar he is, he's going to take those statements right there, which may or may not have been in context. He's going to take those and run with them and say that Ukraine is trying to become a nuclear state. And now the nuclear threat that Putin's been trying to uh, basically propagate against Ukraine, it's becoming real because Zelensky said that of his own mouth. So that is dangerous, though, because you could, uh, Russia can bomb Ukraine now. And we'll just say, see, if, if Zelensky didn't make their comments about getting nukes, we wouldn't have done that. Like, this is a dangerous thing. I don't know why Ukraine is doing this. Ukraine could have, uh, you know, like Zelensky could have uh, do all this in the back channels, behind the closed doors with NATO members or something like that. You didn't need to make a public statement, right? This is an excuse that Russia can use to use nuke. And nukes are one of those things that like, it doesn't matter which technology it is. It's a nuke, right? It, if, if it detonates, it's a nuke. Like, it's a show of power. And Russia needs a soul of power right now. So to me, this is, feels very dangerous. Like, why do that? You should have done that in the, you know, behind doors with members, NATO members, uh, USA president and everybody like that. Basically, what Zelensky did was give Putin the ultimate propaganda tool, which was say, basically, we're about to be a nuclear threat right on Russia's border, and that is now going to rally the people in Russia to really feel like there's an actual threat right on their border. So that was not a very wise statement by Zelensky to make or even allude to that, because now it's giving Putin the ultimate liar, the ultimate manipulation tool. But with that, we're jumping into our next post here, which goes to Nexta. And like I said, Zelensky is trying to walk these comments back, because I think he realized that he kind of stepped in it by making those comments, and he said that we did not intend to threaten the world with nuclear weapons according to Zelensky and he's saying that some media spread false information and Ukraine should be in NATO and during the Budapest memorandum we gave up our nuclear weapons in exchange for security guarantees and if we had kept it uh, it would have been a defense like other nuclear countries. What a stupid thing even this like now admitting to your mistakes like that we didn't mean to uh, threaten this feels like a PR nightmare like you're the top diplomatic person in Ukraine. You're surrounded by Western countries trying to support you. You have a lot of like aid and consults at this point. You should have known what to say, man. You can't make this kind of blunder, right? This feels like somebody who didn't prepare and just said it something and just like made a mistake. This is insane, man. This feels like somebody should have told him like, you can't say this. This will be taken out of context. You should be careful what you say. It, it doesn't just depend of like, uh, you know, giving fuel to Russia, but it also depends on like how you don't alienate our own allies, right? And like uh, just saying that we're going to get nuke. It's not just about Russia. It's about everybody else that are trying to support you as well. Because uh, topic of nukes is very different, right? It's sensitive. It affects everyone in one way or another. Everybody would perceive that very weirdly. So th this was a blunder, I think. Countries. Uh, also, it says here the president also said the White House team will soon be in Kyiv with a response to the victory plan, and Ukraine will now receive 500 to 750 million in aid from the U.S. Uh, every two to three weeks. So they're actually getting some more aid here. But the big thing is Zelensky is trying to walk these comments back now. We just heard them on the video what he said, and I guess it could be interpreted two different ways. But I think there's really, honestly, one real interpretation of it. It did sound him from Zelensky and that was not smart but it is smart that Zelensky is trying to walk that back now but unfortunately I think the damage the real damage has been done because it's given Putin the propaganda tool and the soundbite that he needs to be able to escalate the war even further so that is certainly not good but hopefully Zelensky can walk those comments back not to damage the relationship with his allies but with that we're jumping into our next post here and this one goes to inside geopolitics and we're getting some more news about the North Koreans sending soldiers to Ukraine and honestly if there was any reason for Zelensky 
Zelensky to make the statement that was very bold of a statement about nuclear weapons or NATO membership. That's because currently North Korea is entering the war in Ukraine, and I'm sure that's getting Zelensky very concerned and worried because even. But then you make statements like German, French, even American troops give us aid because Russia is doing that same. Like, why can't you do that if they can do it? that type of shit rather than make a nuclear threat to me that was like one of the biggest blunder you can make it's just like how can you make it after all this stage after where you are right now after you're surrounded by all these people like this is like you know some uh, big corporation who knows who's known for like not making mistakes where you can make mistakes with words and somebody just blunders up it's like come on this is insane man even though the North Koreans aren't a very powerful fighting force, that is nonetheless a new source of manpower that Russia is pulling on, which Ukraine does not have. So that is probably very concerning, and it's probably causing stress in Zelensky, which is probably why he made that very bold and sort of sort of uh, inappropriate statement to make about the nuclear weapons at the moment. Uh, and then right here in this post right here, it says, North Korea is sending 12,000 troops, including special forces, to support Russia in its war against Ukraine. And according to the South Korean National Intelligence Service, North Korea has decided to send four brigades to Ukraine and has already begun deployment. And it seems like really the only country around the world taking this very seriously is not the United States, it's actually South Korea. Because down here you'll actually see, it says the South Korean President uh, Yoon convened an emergency security meeting regarding North Korea's troop movement into Russia. I mean, you can't say that America's not involved. America is like a, I don't want to make it weird or some piss off somebody, but America is like a puppet player. Puppet player? Yeah, puppet player. Who just... So you don't know if America's not working in the background because America can't just directly get involved. News like America did this, America did that, that could be taken out of context. And South Korea and South Korea's defense is also like kind of like in partnership with America. Kind of like America can't just like in the you know background create this kind of battle plan. Like how are we going to do this? Should we respond directly? No, let's talk to South Korea and make them do all these things with our backing power. Right? America has to do that. They can't just like basically go out directly, like get involved in that way. So I think America's obviously involved in this one. But it makes sense. When even with, uh, you know, Putin's, uh, Putin's in a way mastermind, isn't it? Because he saw this is happening. He saw the troop uh, issues. And just a few months ago, he went to the North Korea, did all those rides with the Kim Jong-un, friendship for life, because he knew anybody else is somehow tied to the world and economy. Like they're not going to send troops to Russia. North Korea is the only one I can think of who hates America and West and can in turn be in a partnership with me and actually send troops. So he went to the North Korea and did all this trade and now he's getting troops. But that's some kind of a master plan, isn't it? South Korea is taking this very, very seriously. I'm glad they are because someone needs to take it seriously because it is a very bad situation for Ukraine. And ultimately, NATO will have to respond to this in some way. We can't just sit back and allow this to happen. But at the same time, Zelensky cannot go overboard by saying he wants to... How? How? How NATO's going to answer how? It doesn't really violate anything. Ukraine is not part of NATO. Only thing I can think of is like proper countries like South Korea, France, and who is like point blank supporting Ukraine. And who has a stake in this? In which way? If Ukraine falls, we are next type of way. Germany, right? Poland. Poland is just there, right? So Poland, Germany, France, all these people have actual stake in it, right? Who can point blank say, like, if Ukraine falls, we are next. We can't allow that. So if North Korea can send troops, we are going to send two or something like that. They can do that. But NATO in general, like US and everybody is like, oh, this wild, wild it's what? Ukraine is a part of NATO. And that's why he's trying to join NATO, I think. Uh, arm his country with nuclear weapons because that, like I said, that gives Russia the ultimate propaganda tool that we cannot afford them to have right now because if they're able to rally their people up to fight the war and keep going, then Russia will keep going indefinitely because they'll, they'll have their people rallied up and there will be no chance of the people rising up and saying enough is enough. That will never happen if the people... I didn't even thought of that. I thought the NATO uh, nuke version, like Russia can nuke Ukraine based on that threat, like any threat is in a threat and nuclear threat is the biggest threat, right? We weren't using any nuke. But if Ukraine is even whiff of, we, we got even whiff of Ukraine is going to use nukes, we have to bomb them. And so we, we did. They have that element now. I just thought of that. But yeah, as a tool, they can literally go from town to town and cities to cities just show that like Zelensky is arming Ukraine with nukes. You're going to get bombed. Do you want to join military or not? People are going to join then. So yeah, troops like, you know, like recruitment is going to go sky up. 
people are effectively rallied by Putin's false statements. So we're seeing a very interesting situation here, but we have a real bombshell here in our next post, which also goes to War Translated, and we allegedly have footage that's circulating online showing North Korean soldiers training in Russia already, and the head of the HRU, Budinov, reported that Russia plans to send 2,600 soldiers to Kursk what? by November the 1st. So let's take a look at the video. Вот они побежали, побежали. So here we can see it looks like some type of training base inside They're of great Russia at running. based on what we're seeing right here. The guy filming says they can't be filmed and for obvious reasons they don't want footage of this getting out. So if this is indeed a Russian training ground, you can... The horde is coming. They are running. Well, we, we've seen those, uh, what is it like, King John Un's, what is it called, like motor parade? And we've seen those people run behind him for miles. Just seeing that hurts my leg. Like what the fuck? So yeah, they train, yeah, there you go. Uh, they're, they're probably going to be trained at that level because it, what you're going to do is under threat, right? So it doesn't matter how you say it. If North Korean military, if they do work, and if they don't defect and run away, they're going to be somewhat effective because they come from a place which is like really hard. They have to probably train like insane people because they, you have to be the best, right? Every time I see those people running behind that limousine of like Kim Jong-un, it just makes me think like, how are they running that much? That's insane, man. Allegedly see North Korean soldiers right there uh, being trained by the Russians. And once again, take this with a grain of salt because even though it appears to be what it says to be, this is, of course, unconfirmed as the moment. But this footage yeah, appears you can to really show see North who Korean soldiers are. training inside of Ukraine. But we will be waiting for more confirmation of that. But it looks like they're being trained maybe on some type of run or some type of march out here or something like that. And they're being trained how to basically fall in line with the Russian military. So now, obviously, they have some barbed wire up right there as well. So I'm not sure if that's for the North Korean not to get out or what we do know that north koreans have already defected from russia or at least ran off and hid in the woods uh, because they want to get away from the really bad situation that they're in back in their home country so whatever the case is this appears to be what it is north korean soldiers here but like how does that conversation go though right north koreans probably telling russians like don't treat this as your own soldiers because you have to create barbed wire so they don't escape it's like what the fuck right i'm not saying that's what it is but if that's the conversation because in North Korea, there is, there's literally things in place so people actually don't run away, right? Yeah, so you've seen a lot of videos like Real Life Lord and other, like how they try to escape, how they plan and everything. And you can't really escape and they made it a million times worse in past year or something with everything around it so they can't escape, right? With closing off everything and shit like that. So how does that conversation go? Are we sending troops to make sure like they don't run away? Like, what the fuck? And if that's the case... I get it, like when training, they're not going to run away. But actual battle happens when they see their chance, how are they not going to run away? I guess the only element I can think of that their family is still back in North Korea and there might be ultimatum like don't run away or your family is going to pay for it or some shit like that. Like I said, we will wait for more confirmation. But with that, we're moving on to our next post here, and this one is going to go to the Kyiv Post. And last night, we did see the Russians unleash one of the largest drone assaults on Ukraine overnight, says the Kyiv military administration. And above Kyiv, Ukrainian defenders shot down every single last drone. So even though this was a very large attack by the Russians uh, here in Ukraine, the Ukrainians were able to shoot them down once again, thanks to all the air defense they have. So, of course, that's very good news, but not good. Russia's launched in the attack, but at least Ukraine has been armed with all the defense they need to be able to shoot the stuff down so let's take a look at the video so right there you can hear the interceptions of the drones there's several more right there on camera as well as another one and it appears there was a lot of drones actually coming in there. It was def definitely not one drone. It was quite a few. So a very large drone attack. But nonetheless, you do see all the air defense taking it successfully out. So once again, a very That is insane. That took out all of them. I guess they got probably like uh, advanced warning by certain systems here and there. But yeah. But with that, we're jumping into our next one here, and this one goes to Null Reports. And we are getting more word from a Ukrainian official, Umarov, uh, that apparently there have been no new proposals for trading occupied territories for NATO membership, uh, dispelling some rumors that we have been hearing. He said, I haven't heard anything like that, and if it existed, he said he would have probably done very bad things. I'm not really sure what that means right there, but apparently he doesn't want to hear any proposals about trading territories for NATO membership. I don't blame him on that one bit, and really Ukraine should hold on to all their territory. They should find for every last bit of it if i think there'll be some next level shit in this kind of a bad environment it's like you see a beggar who doesn't have anything and he asks for food you say give me your boot and then i'll give you food type of way i know that's not like really apples to apples but still 
if NATO, like after all this, after all the free aid NATO countries have given, if they say like, if you want NATO members, if you need, we need some territories. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't work. We've gone this far, so why turn back now? So I do agree with the statement right here. And once again, just confirmation, there is no proposals for trading territory for NATO membership, just to dispel that whole myth right there. And with that, we're jumping into our next article, and this one goes to War Translated. And we got video right here that apparently a vehicle City center, and it's likely the target uh, of a high ranking collaborator. So, this vehicle right here, which was blown to smithereens, let's take a look at it up close real quick. This was allegedly carrying a collaborator in it, and they were taken out by what appears to be maybe some type of vehicle bomb or a car bomb of sorts. And you can see right there, there's the that is insane. You're gonna hear a lot of news like that, like key interest people taken out and all that shit. Yeah, this is this is the news that we are getting. We need to remember that we don't get all the news, right? Anything that you can find, sure, there are many news that you might not get. Or I wouldn't be even surprised that there'll be some news that uh, some military people get to it before anybody else can get and just like, or even if anybody else get, like they tr make sure that no news come out, right? Uh, so th there might be very uh, key things happening, like this kind of a, uh, you know, suddenly car explosion and all that shit. Because we saw how Israel basically made those pagers go off in Lebanon, I think, right? In Hezbollah? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So it's not like people don't have technology. People are going to do a very ridiculous shit with modern technology. It's like that Will Smith movie, right? Well, I forgot the name of that. I'm pretty sure it was a Will Smith movie about NSA and things. Damn, what was the name, name of that movie? It was really famous uh, long ago, right? It was like a very interesting movie. I watched that a lot because it was like redone a lot on TV when I was a kid. Uh, but yeah, something like that. Everybody's watching every time and all that shit and technology. Maybe that's overblown, but something like that. So there may, might be many things happening, many technology and things getting explored and assassination happening that we might not, we might never hear about it until like years from now when papers become like uh, you know declassified. We do have some pretty big news coming out today. Mainly the situation that we're watching here is what Russia is going to do with the statements about nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Even though those statements might have been walked back by Zelensky, like I said, there is no guarantee that Putin's going to let that go. And knowing how Putin operates on his very sick level, he will take those statements and use them to the full advantage to manipulate pretty much everybody inside of Russia and to cause even more escalations. I'm not sure what the escalations at this point would look like, but there certainly is something that Putin could pull out of his hat to escalate this thing even further. So with that, we will be watching it but of course press the like button on the video if you enjoyed the content and also yeah the enforcer is like uh d does this like regular updates really really good channel uh, in between he stopped doing that but somebody told me like he was hit by uh, some weather phenomenon and just like you couldn't do that i thought the things just died down but apparently not but yeah uh, this is just insane that, that was a big ass blunder in my opinion and from opinion of force as well, obviously, uh, from like Ukraine, uh, Zelensky's part, right? As soon as I heard it, like I just saw a lot of scenarios which I told you about, right? Uh, just, yeah, I don't know, man. I always like go to nuclear bomb thing because to me it feels like it might be, it might be just me and people constantly tells me like you bitching too much, right? In basically almost all videos, like, oh, come on, that's not going to happen type of way. But I don't know, man. I've seen history and th uh, how things go enough that I can see this trend. And people always assume like this is a step too far, he might not do it. But invading a country was also a step too far. When he was putting like tents and medical tents and all those tents at the uh, Ukrainian border, Russia was doing that. People like, oh, surely nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, it did. Surely nothing's gonna happen. By the way, most, not most, a lot of countries around the planet is at war now. North Korea, South Korea might become a thing, it is escalating. Middle East are already at like uh, ridiculous war right now with uh, like uh, multiple countries. Israel might attack Iran because Iran was already uh, drone striking Israel. Israel is attacking Gaza and uh, Lebanon and all that shit. Who knows where that's gonna go, right? Ukraine and Russia thing is happening or who knows where that's gonna escalate, which other European countries gonna join. Shit is blowing up slowly. And this four or five years ago might have felt ridiculous in there. No way that's gonna happen. What is this, a Hollywood script? No, it's real. So nuke might feel like, oh, that's a bit too much. You really don't know, man. Because one small place with like only military base or something, just tactically nuking that place is enough of a message to send people. Like I'm going to use nuke because my nukes are working and I can use it. And after Zelensky's that blunder, Putin can really justify that. If let's say Putin uses a nuke and US and everybody just gets people, how dare you use nukes? I'm going to nuke you now. How dare you do that? Just everybody screams. 
Moscow can basically just say, if Zelensky didn't say that, I wouldn't have done that. So it's not my fault. They can literally deflect and use that. This is the fucked up part. On top of that, like Enforcer said, Russia can use that as a propaganda or something. Town to town, cities to cities in Russia, just to say, you're going to get nuked. Do you want to join or not? Of course, people are going to join after that. So I don't know, man. Uh, that was a blunder to me. I think if you wanted to use that as a chip to say, I want to join NATO now, you should have said that in behind the doors rather than in open conference. That was just weird. All right, well, if you like, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.